you can't get better than this. Late autumn day, sun's out, I'm driving a Triumph Spitfire. Perfect. Actually, I love this car, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's this a good idea? I'm really missing it now. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to forget it. Welcome back to Dawson Scouts' garage. I'd been given the keys to this 1972 Triumph Spitfire. Um, it's my girlfriend's dad's currently. Um, it's stayed in the family for the last 40 years or so. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking it out for a drive. We're going to be looking at some of the history of the car. We've got folders and folders of history on it. Um, and I'm going to be driving it and also the previous owner, Fred, uh, who owned this car for 40 something years. Um, he's going to be taking it out as well as a kind of reunion drive. Um, but yeah, let's fire it up and Get on the road. was a car produced between 1962 and 1980. It's a two-seater convertible British sports car. The design is by Giovanni Michelotti, originally commissioned for the standard Triumph Motor Company before it was taken over by Leyland Motors. This particular example is the Triumph Spitfire Mark IV. The Mark IV was produced between 1970 and 1974 with a total run of 70,000 cars. This is a 1972 model. It's powered by a 1296cc inline four engine which produces 61 brake horsepower and 92 newton meters of torque, sending its power to the rear wheels. Connected to this is the four-speed manual transmission with overdrive. The car weighs 734 kilograms or 1,618 pounds. The engine is fueled by two SU carburettors and cooled by water. First thing that immediately springs out is the um, the kind of heaviness of the gearbox and the steering. Obviously, no power assisted steering in this, um, but it's quite a light car and it feels it feels easy to drive. Um, it takes a little while to get used to the gearbox. So this is a four-speed manual with overdrive, and yeah, it's a nice drive. Um, not too bumpy. You can feel what the car's doing. It moves around a little bit. Um, so we're just in. Uh, in the town now, heading out to some country roads, and we'll take this old girl for a spin. Another thing is that the brakes are a little bit more spongier to what I'm used to. Um, for those who are new to the channel, I um, own and maintain a 1999 Honda S2000. Uh, it's got some uprated brakes and um, stage two clutch and that sort of thing, so it's, it's a very different car. Um, also a kind of convertible sports car, but uh, from the, 19, uh, the 90s and 2000s era. This is a 1972, so a classic, a true classic car. Not the warmest of days to be doing this. Um, I've got quite a thick coat on. Uh, actually, I'll put the, um, the heater on as well. Let's have ah, that over to car, lovely. And yeah, it's a real joy to drive. Um, so this car has a huge amount of history in it. Um, it's been in the family for uh, for over 40 years. So Fred was the second owner, uh, bought it when it was just two or three years old, I think. We've got a big, big folder of um, history on it, uh, which I'll go through in the next bit of the, um, of the video. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been absolutely immaculately maintained. Um, I think it's had a new engine in at one point. It's gone round the clock, so it's done 117,717 miles. And yeah, it's... Um, that first and second just get some used getting used to, but we're on a 40 now, so let's take it up a little bit. Quite a buzzy little cabin. Again, there's not much road noise, there's not much wind buffeting. Um, it is quite a short, short car. So I kind of stick out the top a little bit. If you if I was say 5'8, 5'9, it'll be perfect. Uh, but it's just a little bit, little bit breezy up the top here. 
but yeah, really fun to drive. So we're in South Somerset, we're just um, heading out of Yeovil um, towards Mudford and Queen Camel, uh, probably to the Sparkford roundabout and then just turning back again because I'm not entirely sure what the weather's going to be doing and it isn't, it isn't all that dry on the roads today. Let's just knock it into overdrive. Yeah, lovely. Nice and smooth. So we're doing just over 40 and we're at 2,000 revs. Um, and it's absolutely fine. It's a perfect sort of uh, A road and B road cruiser. So we had a little bit of trouble starting the old girl this morning. Um, had to put a little battery uh, jump pack on it. Uh, hadn't been driven for a little while. Um, maybe a couple of months or so. So the battery had drained a little bit and, and after a few cranks of the um, trying to crank the engine over it, the battery had, had given up the ghost really. So she's nicely warmed up now, let's get her up to 60. She likes to rev. We got to about 3,000 revs there. And we're up to 60, no problem at all. She just cruises along. an old um, British convertible sports car. Um, we don't see many, so many of them on the roads nowadays. You see plenty of MGBs and um, MG Midgets and um, all the Triumphs, Triumph 1600s and Stags and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, not so many of these. And even at classic car shows, we've, we try and spot them and, and we don't really see that many. Um, I think one of the issues is they, they, <laughs> they rusted like hell really. Um, and this car has been, all the panels have been taken off and treated with rust oil and, and uh, wax oil, sorry. And they've made absolutely darn sure that it is good. And it's never driven particularly much in the winter. It's never driven when it's wet. Um, we're very lucky now that we've actually got some sunshine. But yeah, it's an absolute joy to drive. Let's slow up for the 40 speed limit. Third downshift is lovely. Let's uh, turn off the drive. Ooh, I wasn't expecting a big hole in the road there. There we go, into the village hall. And let's get out and show you around the car. Trying to get into reverse. I might just let it roll back actually. Yeah. taking over for a little bit. Okay, so let me show you around the interior of this vehicle. Um, we have vinyl seats which are in really good condition actually. Um, yeah, nice place to sit. Got a four speed gearbox with overdrive. So overdrive is just a simple flick button there. Uh, got things like choke in the bottom here. Got all manual controls for the heaters. So it's quite cold today so we're on hot and blowing it straight at me. Uh, Temperature and fuel gauges. Uh, you've got your um, instrument light dimmer switch, I think. Not sure. Uh, speedo. Sorry, the um, lighting's really, <laughs> really quite extreme today. It's producing some nice shots on the on the GoPros, but yeah. Um, little glove box, cubby holder. Let's that thing focus. There we go. And we've got a um, obviously a convertible roof, but with a uh, cover on there. It's one of the GoPros. But this car is in amazing condition for its age, really. Um, almost almost show condition. There's one or two little 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 bits which um, showing its age, but 
yeah, nice um, unusual sort of slanted off position. So if we, um, yeah, that's where the pedals are in relation to the in relation to the steering wheel. So you're kind of sitting at a, a bit of a strange angle, um, but you get used to it. So, and then the ignition barrel down at the bottom there. So if I find the keys, let's start her up. Make sure she's out of gear. A bit of throttle, and that's the ticket. So I'll just pop the choke on for a little bit and um, we'll open up the engine bay. Yeah, there we go. Just get it warmed up again. So the, um, the engine bay is um, lifted up by two kind of springs here. So one there, the big old bonnet, and one here as well. And we can have a look at that full cylinder engine. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> I'll do this one handed. Um, there we go. We've got a nice little hinge system here. Oh yeah. That's the engine. There's one or two upgrades in here and we'll be talking to the uh, one of the previous owners who um, fitted a fan and that sort of thing to stop it from overheating. This car with the bonnet up is um, quite a spectacle really. Um, it's a huge bonnet and only quite a small engine. Um, I don't want to leave it did, don't want to leave her running too long. Um, obviously, it's, it's quite a cold day, but I don't want her sitting here too long. See you later. It's old uh, Bentley. Slight hesitation when turning in, so you have to do. You do have to be careful. You can't throw it into corners. And that could be the tyres are uh, uh, thin and old, old-style tyres. Um, I mean, you don't want to be chucking this around too much. Far too joyous a drive to be caning it. The rain's held off. Brilliant. Okay.
get her back home. Wrap her up for the winter. People scoff at classic car owners, but this is great. You can't get better than this. Late autumn day, sun's out, I'm driving a Triumph Spitfire. Perfect. Those were my impressions of this 1970 Triumph Spitfire Mark IV. Obviously I don't know everything about this car and the long history that it's had in the family, or indeed much about classic cars in general. But we've had a little reunion drive, uh, so uh, Fred, the previous owner, has come down and um, driven the car again, uh, which was a real uh, quite a moment really, he was um, kind of regretting he'd he got rid of it, but he just he, he just simply didn't drive it anymore. Uh, living in London, it was um, difficult to kind of go anywhere in it and have any fun. Thank you so much for watching this first part of the video. In the second part, we'll be bringing you that reunion drive with Fred, the previous owner of 42 years. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And if you hit that notification bell, then you'll know when the second part of the video is available.